Hi guys, I'm Bobsy. Now in the last video, we got the animations for the player done. They were perfected, beautiful, nothing wrong with them. And now let's set up some kind of zombie setup for our multiplayer shooter game here. It was something asked in the comments, and so I thought that's kind of fun. Let's do that, and let's just let's take it one video at a time, see how far we get. We can make everything in one video, that's great. If not, that's all right too. Now let me start by just making an empty object and just call this a zombie. Something tells me it's not gonna end up looking like a zombie because I will probably just use something I already have in here, but you can of course just make it look like whatever. I'm gonna go into the poly starter pack that we downloaded last time. Go into characters and let us take the bean cowboy. I want him to be the zombie. Yep, looking pretty darn scary to me. All right, now I'm just gonna tell you immediately, I'm not gonna set up the zombies with nav mesh and pathfinding and so on. You can look into pathfinding tutorial yourself. I have one on how you work with PCs and pathfinding in multiplayer. If you want, you can go take a look at that video. But in this one, I'm just gonna have it simply just move towards the player and you just try and kill it. It's gonna be very, very basic. Uh, for that, you can use a ready buddy, you can use character controller. Uh, let's use a ready buddy. They are typically very, very fun. Now we also want the transform to be updated. So let's have a network transform and let's just have this server control. So it will not be client authoritative, but it will send to owner. Now it's not gonna be spawned by a client or it's not gonna be owned by a client anyway. So it wouldn't really matter, but let's go in, make a new folder, just call it zombie like so. And let's make a new zombie controller script and just throw that onto the zombie. Now in here, let's just make this a network behavior because that way and in terms of positioning at least we can make sure it's only the server handling it so let's do an on start client whoops on start client if server is server initiated that means that we are the server so if it is not initiated we want to enable the false and we just return right so now what we need to do is we wanted to move towards the player. We have our rigid body. So let's do a private rigid body. I'm just going to call it underscore rigid. And then we're going to do if try get component out rigid body, rigid body. And we're just going to say underscore rigid equals to rigid body. Now we've stored this reference to our rigid body. We can use that to move it towards the player. Now we need to figure out which player is closest. And there's multiple ways of doing this. We, as far as I remember, set up an array for our players. If I'm not wrong. Yep. We have a dictionary here of our players. So what we can just do is we can constantly iterate through that and figure out which player is actually closest. So in the player controller, we run through for each loop. Go through our player controller dot players. And let's just go through the values only. We don't need anything else. And so we can just say this is a player. And and here we need to find the closest player. So actually, let's just let's make a new method for this. So let's make a private vector three get closest player uh, position. Sure, let's call it that. Throw it in here. We'll loop through each of the players. Then what we do, we want to store the position. So we want to store the vector three closest player position is vector three dot zero. And then we want to, I guess, let's store a closest distance equals to math f dot infinity. That's just a very, very large number. And now we want to do a check between our player. So if player, no, if, sorry, if vector three dot distance between our player dot transform dot position to the the transform dot position, which is the zombie that we're on, is less than the closest distance. We want to store this. So we want to store the closest distance equals to the distance that we get. And we want to store the closest player position is equals to the player dot transform dot position. And then by the end of it, we just return the closest player position. Go. This now means every time we call this, we will get the closest player position calculated. Now we can make a private void move towards player, like so. And we can just uh call the move towards player in our update loop here and just to make sure that we don't get any issues we can just do if underscore rigid equals to null we just return right okay so now we're inside of our move towards player and this is where we just want to handle the actual movie now let's set up some parameters on our zombie so let me do a serialize field private float let's do move force and let's do max move speed the max move speed equals to five let's do the move force equals to three the force will be the force that's constantly applied over time and the max move speed will be the maximum amount of speed that uh, before it will stop just applying speed to him. So what we can do here is we can just get the direction. So we'll start by doing vector three dot uh, direction equals to get closest player position uh, subtracted by our own position. This is how you get a direction. And now what we do is we take the underscore rigid and we'll just say add force. Actually, I think what it just wanted to do there, direction dot y equals to zero is a good idea. That way we only do it in one direction. We can normalize the direction as well. We can either do it like this or how I like to do it is just encapsulate these and just do dot normalized like so. And then here, I want to take the underscore rigid dot add force and we're just going to add force in the direction times the move force and we're gonna just yeah and we're actually only going to calculate this if the if rigid body dot velocity dot magnitude so this is our speed is greater than the max move speed 
we just want to return. We can either cap it as it just wanted to do that with auto filling, but I have no need to actually cap it. That might look unnatural and can create jittery movement. I'd rather just simply return out, just making sure we don't add any new force. So technically the zombie can move faster than the max move speed, but it just won't get any new forces applied to it in the direction. So let's just go and check if this even follows now. We of course also need to add a collider to this. So let's go in here and just make a capsule collider. And let's just position this correctly. He's about whoops he's about too tall i think and let's move it up by one and yeah that looks about right now let me try and just keep the zombie in the scene so oh my god oh that's great i didn't even think of that oh my god <laughs> okay wait a minute so we, we gotta gotta constrain him on the x and the set rotation otherwise he'll just fall over so let's just let's do that and yeah now you can see he will get a direction added in our direction now you can still rotate on the y but that's perfectly fine because we'll just want him to look in the direction anyway so as you can see the zombies forward will just have to look in the direction of us so let us just do do move towards player and then just up here in the update we can just have it look at us as well so transform dot rotation equals to quaternia dot look rotation and then we need to get the direction again which is here this and here actually there we go. that should just be a direction and hopefully this would just work i hope Let's just give it a shot see if that works now it is technically going to look up and down at us as well there's ways to get around this but as you can see this works it'll now look down at us and up when we jump up in the rock as you can see it looks up we might not want this waiting for some weird finicky things he's uh, seemingly floating away i wonder what's happening here he is slowly coming in our direction is it just something with the move force but just up this hmm this is kind of funky okay we'll have to have a look at that in a bit as for this what we can do is we can just get the closest player position but instead we just store this like the three closest player equals to close player position and then we just take the closest player dot y equals to the same height as our transform dot position dot y and then we just put the closest player in here this will just work and actually let's just put this in as well so let's say transform oh sorry look at player that and we'll just make a private void look player just to probably organize our things here and that should work just fine now it should look at our player oh, and there we go now you can see it'll stay at the same y value it won't look up and down at us looks like it's following us correctly again i wonder what happened before it's a bit weird we, we can play around with that we can debug it if it becomes an issue now we can also see that we can add a bunch of zombies and they should all glide around collide into each other and it should work quite well some of them flew up in there but yeah you can see it they can all just move around they can collide with each other try and follow you yeah i think that's pretty fun this works let's keep it like that now we have zombies following you now we also need zombies that are able to hit you so let's make a new script so let's remove all of these zombies so we just have one and let's make a new zombie script that's called zombie let's do zombie health that way we can also shoot the zombie we'll have to handle that we'll have a serialized field private and max health just set that equals to do something like 20 for now that's not loaded. and then we can do a public void take damage we want to input the damage to take and we also want a private integer as for the current health so on awake we just want to set the current health equals to the max health i also want to make this a network behavior simply because i want to be able to synchronize some things from here for example when the zombie dies so the take damage will take the current health minus equals to the damage and let's see let's see let's see yeah so what we also want to do is we want to check if the current health is less than or equals to zero we just want to whoops want to call some kind of die command stop auto filling please there we go and we can do a private or die and something happens when they do die right so this should work this happens when the zombie then dies we can technically just call the server manager that the spawn and when we just want to despawn the game object or technically we can also just send in the network object uh, but let's just call the game object it should work fine and this should ensure that we do it on the server so this server call some people have been confused by it the server call here basically just means that we're calling it purely on the server so a server rpc means a client calling to a server a server rpc means it's basically just the, it's a bit the same as if there was an if statement here with some extra logic behind it but it's basically just checking if we are the server or not that's really all it's doing is just ensuring that this can only be called by the server and i only want the server to be able to actually give the damage we could also make this a server rpc because this will work perfectly fine for the case of the client then calling it as well the server will run the take damage logic and that will just call the die and this will work fine because it comes from within the server rpc i hope that makes sense so now they're able to take damage and we need to be able to call this take damage from the player weapon 
and that had the current weapon fire which ray cast so now you can see here it checks for player health but we can also just check for hit that transform that try get component out zombie health what i call it zombie health like that and then we call the zombie health dot take damage and then we just call the damage now we could also send in the owner id keep track of score yada yada we did that in another video and so i hope you have an idea of how the scoring works and how you could add this to the zombies if not of course i can do it and um, if we want to but let's just keep it like this let's also instantiate the blood particles for this and yeah i think this should work just fine so now we'll also throw the blood particles onto the zombies and yeah i think now it should just be able to, you should just be able to hit the zombies and they should die so i think that's pretty beautiful in how simple it is let's just try and click play again zombies will fly all over the place so and we should be able to shoot them oh i didn't attach the zombie health of course move them again zombie health nah there we go and now i can just copy a bunch of them and let's go yeah now you can see we spawn the blood particles and yeah that seems to work now we can kill them they despawn yeah and i think that's pretty beautiful now we have some zombies should work in multiplayer as well but for good measure let's go test it should see that it should be it should be hunting both players so now i went in as another player and the other player can't see them. Team reference. So there's a bunch of errors here. Wonder what happened now. It's probably something silly again like last time. Using reference player control. That's interesting. Or was that just when he disconnected? Is that it? Didn't it show before he disconnected? Let me try and connect. Connect. No, so it doesn't show before it disconnects. But we are seeing, though, some, some issue with the client only being able to see one of them, which is a bit weird. So you can see that it works, that they do follow him. Well, except for that guy. Interesting. Okay, so let me just show you. I have some errors in the console over here. Don't mind the player card. So it's these not found in scene. Can add the debug manager. Now let me just try first of all sometimes in fishnet if we just refresh the scene IDs. And for that sake, maybe if we make these into a prefab, that'll help as well. It shouldn't make a big difference though, but I guess it possibly could. We just try and throw these in some random spots in here. And for that sake, let me just throw them over here to give me time to connect with the other player. Other player's connecting right now. Yeah, there we go. Now it works for the other player as well. You can see that they do follow him. So the other player here, I run over here. He can hit them as well, kill them, work. Yeah, so all of this just works in multiplayer as well. It's easy as that. There you go. Look at this beautiful gun holding as well. Now we have zombies that we can shoot. And next video, we can look into making some zombie spawning thing. And another little detail I just want to add immediately before you leave. Most of you probably already left, but that's a-okay. They will have missed this. We don't want exit time on going back from this, if you haven't realized. Otherwise, it'll take a while to stop walking once you are walking. But yeah. That should be it. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. As always, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.